Hey everybody, I'm John Granato. That's Lance Zerline. You can hear us mornings on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5 here in Houston. And you can also hit subscribe so you get all of our content here at SportsMap HOU. Over the weekend, Lance, there were multiple reports that David Culley is going to return next year as the Texans head coach. Considering how questionable his decision making has been this season. I mean, he went on a nice run where he didn't make a lot of bad decisions, but then he got back into the groove against San Francisco. <laughs> Uh, with the, the punting uh, and with six minutes he left in the game. He went on a game. nice run where he didn't do dumb things. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> he went on a nice run of not doing stupid stuff. Oh, but, my gosh. But, but, uh, are you surprised that already that behind the scenes they're saying, hey, Cully's back? No, I mean, they gave him a five-year deal. David Cully allows the general manager and Romeo Cornell to get on headsets and discuss strategy and things like that. I think he is a a docile head coach who allows the general manager a chance to have almost unprecedented hands-on with the team, even on a game day. So, no, I'm not surprised. I think the Texans now, once it comes time to start winning, I think David Kelly will be gone. But I think right now when they're still in the building phase and they still want to have uh, a little bit of, of, of frankly, uh, a nice guy at head coach that they can kind of – push around and maneuver around in a way that they want to. No, I think David Cully is the guy that fits that mold. David Cully also, frankly, is is uh, a, a coach who, you know, I, th- I think his disposition is good for the team right now We're in there, while they're in a very erratic stage and team-building stage yeah. that is completely disheveled. Why not? No, that doesn't yeah. surprise me that much. No, what good, really good head coach is going to want to come here? Because they're not winning next year. No. I mean, a really good head coach is going to wait until this roster is built up, till they get the draft picks, till the Deshaun situation is settled, uh, all of those things. We, Josh McDaniels ain't leaving right now. He's going he's to wait until all this crap is all uh, filtered out yeah. and, and, and he could take over a team. Agreed. Now, you did tweet over the weekend that, you, you, you know, that Davis Mills' development – uh, is has been pretty good, and you don't see a quarterback in this draft that's a problem as a franchise guy. Um, I, I, can you expound on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I just think I think my first tweet I sent after the Charger game, and it's basically that you can shut the door on the Texans looking at quarterback because even without me studying all the quarterbacks, you can shut the door because they're going to go with Davis Mills. That's not to say I think he's the answer, but it is to say the Texans are going to, to, to spend another year figuring it out with Davis Mills. That was after the Charger game. Before the 49er game, when I spent all this time during over the break looking at uh, quarterback prospects and writing them up for the NFL.com uh, scouting reports, uh, I just came away – without a strong feeling about any of the quarterbacks as the guys to build around. You know, as somebody that I'm, I'd be willing to put four years into, um, and if you only go four years and you don't take that fifth year, then that means that it was a failed draft pick is what that means. So I don't see quarterbacks for me personally that I would rather take a quarterback and, and give them the next four years I think I would rather have Davis Mills for now t- t- as a as a potential bridge quarterback to solution, um, short term or long term, and then draft best available player. So I feel pretty strongly about that now, and I've looked at all the top quarterback prospects, and I just don't think it. I don't think they bear a long term commitment relative to the players who will be on the board that can help make your team better right now and keep the quarterback option open for you in the future. Yeah, and I don't I don't know that I can judge Davis Mills off the San Francisco game either. He was under I mean, that defensive front versus the Texans offensive line was just a mismatch. I mean, it was horrible. There was no running game. You see what Davis Mills did against San Diego when he had a running game and he was hitting guys and it, you know, I just I just feel I feel like Davis Mills uh actually this season has oh, it's, exceeded greatly any expectations that we had of him. I know he's had a lot of bad games. Don't want to overestimate exactly what Davis Mills is, but he certainly has he's he's outplayed most every rookie quarterback save one. But you know, I think it's interesting because it kind of played out the way that you and I hoped it would in that Davis Mills would get enough starts where the Texans could make a decision about that before they headed into the draft. Yeah. I'm a little surprised in terms of going back to where I thought what I thought might happen that the Texans didn't just say, okay, we're going to go, we'll see enough of Davis Mills and then we're going to go draft a quarterback. Actually, it went the other way. We've seen enough of Davis Mills and there's enough flashes here 
to to skip quarterback and go at another position, which I think they're going to do. But now after studying the quarterbacks closely and keeping an open mind, because I, you know, I, I thought I liked Kenny Pickett and Matt Corral. I like Kenny Pickett and Matt Corral. I just I just am not convinced enough that I want to take them over best available. And so I think the ability to get Davis Mills in there a second time, not just the first time, but Terod Taylor not playing well and Davis Mills coming back in, that has been the catalyst for the Texans saying, let's see what happens beyond uh, 2021. And you know what? I actually think it's a right call. Yeah. And Cully coming back, That's I'm not whatever. sure what that means to Davis Mills' development. I think Tim Kelly and Pep Hamilton are probably much more important. And it'll be interesting to see if Tim Kelly, because Pep Hamilton has been an OC in the NFL yeah. with the Indianapolis Colts. He's worked with quarterbacks throughout the league and at the college, collegiate level as well. It'll be interesting to see whether or not if Pep Hamilton might take yeah, a step Yeah, I'm interested up. to see what Jack Easterby does about all this stuff. I mean, Nick Casario. I mean, Jack. What? We had a Texans discussion that – it didn't involve Nick. That didn't involve Jack Easterby one time. Just saying, Tim Kelly. I hope you're, hope you're good with Jack Easterby. Hope you're going to church every week. <laughs> <laughs>